Welcome back, friends. Welcome back to The Corbett Report. I'm your host, James Corbett of CorbettReport.com, coming to you, as always, from the sunny climes of Western Japan here in late April of 2024, as I record this edition of Solutions Watch, that weekly regular D program where, week after week, we look at ways to change our lives and ultimately, hopefully, change the world for the better. And yes, I am rocking the Media Monarchy t-shirt today. Available, of course, from newworldnextweek.com. But let's get right into it. Today I want to look at some very profoundly practical ways that you can improve your life, or at least your online research experience. So let's get into five little tips that I want to share today that I think might be handy in your online travels and travails. And we'll start with a what I imagine is a common a scene for many researchers out there. We're going to start at a Wall Street Journal opinion article that is actually probably worth your time and attention, and so I'll draw your attention to it here. It's called... Oh, let's stop this stupid automatic video. It's called Sun Shines on Fed Doomsday Book, and if that is an intriguing title, well, I hope so, because I suggest you check it out. I may have more to say about this in the future, but... Oh no, the Wall Street Journal. Continue reading your article with a WSJ subscription. Do I... Do I want to feed the Wall Street Journal? Hmm, this paywall conundrum. Well, what if, what if uh, you have a valid paid-up membership to the Wall Street Journal, but you, uh, you lost your credentials to log in? Oopsie. What can you do about that? Well, I guess you could go through all the rigmarole of refinding the login credentials that you absolutely purchased. Uh, or you could use some other tips to try to find out what's happening. One of which is archive.today. I hope you know about this by now because I link it frequently when linking to something like the Wall Street Journal. But here it is, archive.today, and it looks like this. So what you do is you go to the article in question, you take that URL, and you paste it in there, and you click save. And hopefully this one is already saved, so it'll be almost instantaneous. There we go. Last archive four months ago. And look at that. There's the article. All right, cool. Okay, what's well, one very simple, easy method? It doesn't always work all the time, and I would not suggest that you believe that this will always be here preserved online for all eternity. So if there's particularly important information that you need, as always, I suggest you save it locally to your hard drive or to an external drive so that you have a copy of the information because it probably will disappear at some point in the future. But anyway, that's one method you can use. But here's another. As hopefully you know, the archive on the Internet Archive at archive.org, they have the Wayback Machine. And this doesn't always work. But it does work sometimes. Probably not in this case, actually, since this was a paywalled article from the very beginning. I'm going to assume even the very earliest save that they have on the Internet Archive Wayback Machine is going to be paywalled. Yes, indeed it is. But you will sometimes find some of the older articles, like from 2007 or something, that's behind some sort of paywall now. There may be a previous version that was saved some time ago on the Wayback Machine. And I believe, off the top of my head, don't quote me on this, but I believe the New York Times might be an example of that, where they used to have a lot of their articles up openly on the free web and have since put them behind paywalls. I think some of those might be preserved on Wayback. Again, don't take my word for it. It's, uh, your mileage may vary. Um, let's try another method. This used to be a method for getting around paywalls. 12footft.io. Um, but I am given to understand it doesn't quite work that way anymore, so let's give it a try. Live. Let's do it live, as the great Bill O'Reilly once said. Um, oh. Wow. You have to enable JavaScript and disable any ad blocker in order to even use this service. Uh, you know what? I'm not going to do that right now. I have my privacy badger on. I, I'm i okay. I don't really actually need to do this. Anyway, from what I understand, it doesn't really work anymore. I was reading this uh, Reddit thread, what happened to 12foot.io, the media paywall climbing app. Not working. It says, what happened? The uh, It now displays a message, this deployment has been disabled. And in the comments here, there were a number of different suggestions for different services that you could uh, use in this case. Um, for example, um, an interesting one here, uBlock Origin, which is an add-on that hopefully people know about and 
maybe should have in their arsenal of add-ons for their browser. And then you add these bypass paywall clean filter URLs to filters in filter lists, custom filters in Yubo. And they have uh, some GitHub user content, GitLab links here for you, um, along with GHack's explanation article on that, etc. But there's an even simpler idea that's posted somewhere down here. How about onefoot.io? So <laughs> apparently what used to be done on 12foot is now done on onefoot.io. Well, let's, let's give it a try. Although this only talks about ads, so I'm not convinced this is going to work as a paywall skip. Can't honor your request at this time. Oh, well, okay. Anyway, your mileage may vary, as I say. Um, for the time being, archive.today tends to work, but your mileage will vary. Um, and again, please don't suspect that any one of these methods is ever going to work all time. Okay, here's the next tip. Tip number two on books and scholarly articles that you may come across that you have legally purchased elsewhere, but you don't have access to the digital version at your fingertips. So you want to reacquire it. Anyway, Anna's Archive, the largest truly open library in human history. We mirror Sci-Hub and Libgen, which are a couple of services you may have heard of. We scrape and open source Zlib, Internet Archive, Lending Library, Dushu, and more. Um, 31,655,466 books and 99,901,370 papers preserved forever. So there's the full database and you can search and you can search Sci, uh, Sci-Hub specifically. Uh, SciDB, as it as it were, um, etc. For again, for specific journal articles, magazines, comics, books, etc. Um, now, if you are concerned about the legality of this site, Anna's archive, you should be rest at eve knowing that this is not a uh, this isn't a site that that actually holds any of this data. It is simply a search engine for shadow libraries. So it links to this information. Anyway, there you go. Yeah, I'll throw in the good old Wikipedia link if you want more information on that. But that's a tip that exists in the world. Let's move on to number three for today. How about this? Sometimes you come across these kinds of links, like in the comment section of CorbettReport.com. G. Samborsko was kind enough to link up a COVID litigation conference that uh, this user thought was important. Or, for example, in my Welcome to Mixed Reality article from a couple months back, General Bottle Washer came up with this monstrosity of a link. <laughs> and here's the tip for you. Anything after the question mark in one of these URLs is nonsense, filler, tracker, garbage that, if you're being kind, you should remove um, when you post a link somewhere. Not only because it cleans the link up considerably, but also because... These, all of this information that's embedded after the question mark in these links is tracking information that is tracking what you're doing. And presumably you don't want that to happen. So for example, you take an URL like this and you paste it in and you get rid of all of the stuff from the question mark on, just get rid of it all. And so now you have a much shorter link that will direct you to the exact same place as the other link, but minus all the tracking garbage. And uh, same with this link as well from General Bottle, Bottle Washer and others. Just a handy hint, when you're pa pasting a link somewhere, when you're giving someone a link, be kind, remove the tracking garbage for them. Tip number four uh, is going to do, uh, th this is a question I get sometimes, fair enough. Some people don't know how to do this, so I will help them with it. Sometimes you get go to a page and, oh my god, this media could not be loaded. Well... Sometimes that happens. Sometimes the video player is not working for whatever weird reason. And that's why, of course, as you know, I always link all of the various places where this is... You, if this player isn't working for whatever reason, you can get an archive, BitChute, Odyssey, Rockfin, Rumble, and Substack. All of those options should be working. Or you can download the MP4. And I do get the email quite consistently a couple times a month, at least, from various people out there. I click this download the MP4 link... And it just brings up a window where it just starts downloading and playing the video in the window. But how do I get the file, right? No, that's not what I want. Okay, so if and when you are ready to start downloading, for example, by the way, you can also download the audio of the file here in the audio player. There's the download and the MP4 is here. So here's the big trick. You right click or on uh, Mac, it's control click. Anyway, you 
go hover over that and you right click it and you use save link as and that will bring up a window where you can choose what folder you want to save it in and you save the file to your hard drive if you're on mobile obviously it's going to work differently but Mobiles are the vending machines of the internet and not really useful for proper research and especially not for saving things. Anyway, if you just want all of my information on mobile, the best thing to do, of course, is to use the RSS feed, which is always linked up right at the top there. Oh my god, what is this garbled mess of nonsense? I don't understand what an RSS feed is. Well, don't worry. I can tell you exactly what it is. Just go to my site and type in really simple... <laughs> If you can spell properly, really simple syndication. That should do it. I'm trying to type around my microphone, so please forgive me. Anyway, type that in. There's an entire solutions watch that I've done on RSS, really simple syndication. How you can use it. Why you should use it. Cut out all the stupid third-party social media middlemen. You don't need them in your life. RSS, you can directly get it right from my server whenever it's posted. Yay! I think that's probably the best thing. And especially if you're on mobile and you just want it to download, just find a podcatcher, subscribe to the RSS feed, bing, you're done. Wonderful. Anyway, that's just my humble tip. And I have one more tip for you today, tip number five. This one comes in from a listener who just the other day just wrote this in uh, with this. Full disclaimer, I haven't used this, so I can't vouch for it, but I think it's an interesting idea, and if you have yourself any experience with this, I would be interested to hear about this in the feedback for today's edition of Solutions Watch, but it's called Ad Nauseam, as in Ad Nauseam, Ad Nauseam, Nauseous, Nauseam, anyway, it's a clever play on words, don't worry if you don't get it, um, Ad Nauseam.io, which purports to be clicking ads so you don't have to. As online advertising becomes ever more ubiquitous and unsanctioned, Ad Nauseam works to complete the cycle by automating ad clicks universally and blindly on behalf of its users. Built atop uBlock origin, Ad Nauseam quietly clicks on every blocked ad, registering a visit on Ad Network's databases. As the collected data gathered shows an omnivorous click stream, user tracking, targeting, and surveillance become futile. Read more about ad nauseum in this paper. There's a video about it and how you know, it's got all the download links and whatever you need to get this installed. Hopefully you're not using Google Chrome, <laughs> but hopefully something slightly more privacy respecting a uh, Firefox or an Opera or Brave or what have you. Anyway, there's that. Okay, so ad nauseum. Again, I have no experience of using this in particular, but hopefully you get the idea. Um, it will build a top uBlock origin. It will block all of the ads, but it will auto-click on every single one that is suggested, giving these advertisers a complete stream of total nonsense. And it's one of those things, if one person is doing it, it's probably not effective. If everyone was doing it, it would be very effective. Ad, ad tracking, surveillance discernment would become completely useless and advertising online would actually start to break down as a as a model if every single ad was auto clicked on by this bot anyway again just look into it for yourself i'm just putting this idea out there as a potential hopefully salting your data type of idea now those are five simple little tick tricks they're not going to end the new world order but hopefully they can make your online research and browsing experience a little bit better of course, as always, I leave the floor open to you guys out there. What are some other ideas, tips, tricks that you have that you think might be useful here? And the best ones I might take and make into another edition of Solutions Watch further down the road. So if you are interested, if you're a Corbett Report member, please get logged on to the Corbett Report website at CorbettReport.com. Go to this post and leave your ideas, your tips, your tricks in the comments section of this post. I'm looking forward to hearing your feedback, but that's going to do it for today. James Corbett. CorbettReport.com.